there have been many disgusting statements made recently concerning allegations of improper conduct on my part. These statements about me are totally false. The media has dissected and manipulated these allegations to reach their own conclusions. I ask all of you to wait and hear the truth before you label or condemn me. Don't treat me like a criminal, because I am innocent. and James Safechuck are featured in an explosive new documentary that premieres this weekend on HBO. Michael, you know, you're a 44-year-old man now. What, what do you get out of this? What do you get out of this? Uh, he's four. Yeah, four. Uh, I'm not... Jackson has always denied any inappropriate behavior with children. Robson and Safechuck told us about their relationships with Jackson, including very graphic allegations of abuse. A warning here, some of these details. And children have that. I see God in the face of children. Why can't you share your bed? But the, the most loving thing to do is to share your bed with someone. His name has become synonymous with superstardom. He turned out million selling records when his peers were still in grade school a single-handedly rewritten recording history. His dancing seems to defy the laws of physics. He's, he's really a child at heart. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to be a child just because society says. Michael Jackson has spent years and years bemoaning his childhood. Have you seen my childhood? Constantly lamenting his childhood. But yet there are a lot of people who are abused who don't turn out like Michael Jackson. They look I feel their pain. I know that hurts. I hurt, you know? I hurt. I love them. But I love them because I didn't have a childhood. He knew what he wanted, he knew what he wanted to do, and he executed it. He always wanted more. It was never enough. It was never enough. He wanted to prove himself more and more and more. I mean, he was going about the business of very methodically creating a circus-like character, a bizarre character for the media's consumption. I think the father was the reason the Jackson 5 became the Jackson 5. But I also believe that he was a mean, violent, dictatorial tyrant in the family. There were some different sides to him. There was a, a kind side to him, and yet there was a dark side. And I feel that he was a manipulator. And I feel that anybody that came in contact with him, he destroyed them. They've been destroyed. This case is about one thing only. It's about the dignity, the integrity, the decency, the honor, the charity, the innocence, and the complete vindication of a wonderful human being named Michael Jackson. One of the wealthiest people in the world, perceived as very vulnerable, okay? And people constantly tried to exploit him throughout his lifetime. There's a book uh, called The Boy. This is a book with naked boys, completely naked boys inside. And this is what he gave it to me as a present. See, and I always confused that manipulation thinking that that manipulation was that meant that he didn't love me you know but i understand it better now the manipulation was because it was a survival tactic for him mm -hmm. when it's this unusual reality and an ivory tower and this godlike life mixed with an addiction that's when you get into trouble mm -hmm. a lot of trouble i'm not lying when i say that he had something so intoxicating mm -hmm about him and when he was on and when he was ready to share with you or give it to you and be himself and allow you to come in i don't know if i've ever been that intoxicated by anything do you believe michael jackson had an interest in women i don't think so i think he had an interest to meet certain ends you know to have a date to go somewhere there was brooke shields 
he needed to get married, to wipe away some of the bad publicity. There was Lisa Marie. Do you look back at all the photographs after the, the Jordy Chandler case? He's surrounded by children. It was very nearly as if he was saying, stop me if you can. You can't stop me. I'm Michael Jackson. Daddy has been the best father you could ever imagine. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. I mean, all these little kids, some costumed, some just regular kids following him. And it just seemed like a comfort for him. And his explanation was he didn't have a childhood. Yes, did it seem strange? Did it seem eccentric? Yes. But that eccentricity allowed him to get away with a lot because it, it's Michael. So, Berto, did you see the new Michael Jackson documentary, Leaving Neverland? Have you seen it? I did. Oh, my God, I did. So, do you want to talk about it? I almost don't, but I think it's probably for the best if we do. Part of it, I was watching it at a bar, and they must have thought I had some sort of neurological thing where my head doesn't stop moving, because I was just, no, 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 the whole time. It just didn't seem that strange. First, your reaction to leaving Neverland. You are there to testify for him under oath. And then when he dies, you decide that that's a good time to come that, that come out. Wade, I'm very disappointed in. Like, I'm, I'm, I might be a pop singer, but I'm also from the fucking South. And you fucking come at me on some sour shit. You're lucky I got something to lose now. Like, because I would punch you in your face. Telling graphic, sexually explicit stories may be psychologically effective, but it is not evidence that the stories are true. Adult men are perfectly capable of making up such stories. Moreover, to many who have studied the Jackson case for many years, even decades, the stories Robson and Safechuck tell sound eerily familiar, especially Safechuck's allegations, which are by far the most salacious and bizarre. Leaving Neverland, James's eye access cues are dominated by movements to his upper right. Unless he is one of those rare people who has his brain hardwired the other way around in terms of eye accessing, then this suggests that he's making up a lot of his story. When he's down there and... <sighs> this is how we show our love. talk about grooming, this process where the perpetrator manipulates the entire family. Now, when you watch Leaving Neverland or you explore the background of abusers, what we notice is that most people tend to fixate only on the sexual act, whereas grooming helps us explore all the different dimensions it requires for someone to not only abuse a child, but to be a serial Everyone agreed, the parents, yeah. the kids, the Michael himself. And the helpers. and yeah. They would say, yeah, Michael would sleep in his big bed. But it's, it's nothing wrong. They would always wear PJs. That's ignorant. Yeah. And so uh, no one can tell when other people are lying. I'm just going to tell you that. Sure. There's no special skill. There's no one on this planet that is particularly good at it. There's uh, there's no lie detector test that, mm -hmm. that is effective. Right. There's just no way to know. And the way these guys talk, it's I am 99.9% .9 sure they're telling the truth. I think when I was with him, he was happy. He was at the peak of his creativity. And he was at the peak of his success. And everybody wanted to meet Michael or be with Michael. He was already larger than life. And then he likes you. So the issue here is what happened behind closed doors. No, no one disputes the fact that he slept with little boys. 
yeah. again and again agree, and again. Yeah. He spent yeah. all these nights yeah. in bed. And that, that itself is, is very just, weird. Yeah. Right. And if, makes me as a father feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. So if this so was I, the guy I agree down the road, that. if this was, you know, your next door neighbour who was constantly spending the night with little boys. Mm. Yeah. And uh, what, what would you think? No, I think it'd be very weird. So uh, is, is it be... just because of Michael's talent as a performer that we allow him to get away? Well, it, he... I don't accept any of the premises that the rest of the media does, and especially here in America. In America, post Me Too, the American media is completely cowed and terrified of even remotely questioning an alleged victim of any sort of sexual abuse. They are presumed now to be telling the truth regardless how of how inconsistent, how absurd, how contradicted their story is. And that, to me, is very dangerous. And Right now, if you are accused of this type of thing, you are almost judge guilty before you can defend yourself. I think right now we're going a little too far, and a lot of people who are not honest, who are trying to capitalize on this particular movement, are raising accusations that need to be challenged. I think the freedom of the Me Too movement has allowed false accusations to be made. I liked the feeling that was making him happy, that was pleasing him, you know. <laughs> I'll never forget the the um, the feeling of his hair. That was rough, almost like a um, like a Brillo pad. This roughness. And he's down there and this is how we show our love. We were meant to be together. And this is us showing each other that we love each other. And that's really the clash that I had with this documentary, is I tend to believe victims, and I also believe in our legal system, and this may be one of those really unsettling um, examples of where our justice system kind of really failed. So did you believe these two guys? I do. So I want to apologize because in that last deep dive, my conclusion was 60-40. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm 60% sure that he did it and 40% that he didn't right. based on the evidence. Um, I want to apologize for not believing the victims. I should have, I should have believed the victims. You'd have to be so evil, so evil, to do this to a dead man that was, let's say, what everyone else is saying, how great he was to children, how wonderful he was to the children. You'd have to be so evil, so vindictive, for just money? Yeah. To do, because... This you, does you nothing for their career. No, it, it, it hurts them yes. very much so. so. So you have a very famous person who is perceived as weird and who's dead. That's a great target, and that's why the media uh, has embraced, along with the Oprah Winfrey angle, why they've embraced leaving Neverland to a large degree. Moreover, his career crumbled way before he realized that he had allegedly been sexually abused. This means the whole premise of his lawsuit about his breakdowns being a result of sexual abuse is nothing but a lie. And it was a very convenient lie, too. Absolutely. So one of them is a successful uh, industry person. He's, as you said, was the coach for NSYNC, for uh, Britney. He has a reputation. He's known. He's made plenty of money. And then he had this breakdown where he had to walk away from it. So is the motivation, well, now he needs money, so what can he do? Okay, well, then he should actually also start acting in movies. 
because oh my god right and then the other guy even better like give him two oscars because it's like you don't see a movie with the best actors we know that is that well acted <laughs> right i called up dan reed i didn't know dan reed and told him that dan i said you were able to illustrate in these four hours what i tried to explain in 217 and I know people all over the world are going to be in an uproar and debating whether or not Michael Jackson did these things or not, whether these two men are lying or not lying. But for me, this moment transcends Michael Jackson. It's inherently absurd to think that these guys could, four years after Michael Jackson's death in a lawsuit, contradict everything that they had ever said, everything that they'd ever done, including under oath. If you're really that sure of yourself, Dan Reed, then why did you need to be so one-sided? Why did you need four hours of drone shots and dramatic music? So what do we learn from leaving Neverland and really this whole story with Michael Jackson? Well, one of the first things we learn here is it's important to tell the truth. And this is, I guess, really specifically related to like Wade Robson and James Safechuck. You have to tell the truth if you want to be believed throughout your life, if you want to have credibility. It takes a lifetime to build up a reputation and credibility and only a split second to have it all go away. One possibility is that he is a monster and all the other things that made him look altruistic and good were there for ulterior motives and were, were, were not really pure. The second possibility is that these allegations aren't true and he is as he has appeared in the public eye. And the third possibility is that both things can be true. That he can be a person who's done some horrible things and has really hurt a lot of people and also had a side of him that wanted to do good, wanted to show love, wanted to be altruistic. Another thing we learn is, in terms of Michael Jackson, don't even give the appearance of wrongdoing. And unfortunately for Michael Jackson, he did give that appearance through his behavior. We can also learn a little bit about the power of celebrity status, whether Michael Jackson was guilty or not guilty. We see that the mothers of Wade and James really appeared to demonstrate. Most of my dreams seem to come true, and I'm so thankful that they do. Um, I don't know over what period of time, but I, I have lots of dreams, and they usually come true, and I'm so glad when it comes to uh, the record industry. I'm not saying I'm like criminally bad. Of sure. course, that's how people would take it. Um, it's, a, it's a bold statement to make. On my off days, I do as many hospitals as I do concerts. I do as many orphanages as I do concerts. But because it's good news, the press don't cover it. They want bad news. But I do it from my heart. I don't do it to wave a flag and say, look at me. We bring bags of toys and posters and albums. And you should see how it transforms these kids. They jump up and down and they're so happy. Joe believed that his kids had to work twice as hard as everyone else. Because if you're only somewhat good or kind of good, then you don't stand a chance. Joe was determined to lift his kids out of poverty. And for him, that end justified extreme means. He would lose his temper. I just 
remember hearing my mother scream, Joe, you're going to kill him. You're going to kill him. Stop it. You're going to kill him. You know, and, uh, and I was so fast, you know, he couldn't catch me half the time. But when he would catch me, oh, my God, it was bad. At every opportunity, the media has dissected and manipulated these allegations to reach their own conclusions. I ask all of you to wait and hear the truth before you label or condemn me. Don't treat me like a criminal, because I am innocent. forced to submit to a dehumanizing and humiliating examination by the Santa Barbara County Sheriff Department and the Los Angeles Police Department earlier this week. They served a search warrant on me which allowed them to view and photograph my body including my to refuse the examination or photographs and if I failed to cooperate with them they would introduce that refusal at any trial as an indication of my guilt.